the, the tweet up already. I'm ready to fire on this. Uh, let's go, baby. Let's go. And I, How's everybody I, doing? Good weekend? Good weekend? Oh, are you kidding me? Central Oregon, we get a season change here. Crisp, cold at night. Beautiful, oh, sunny afternoons. 15 degrees. As I said to you uh, last week, the golf game, which I love the uh, Masters week here, right? Birthday Masters week. New thing. Beautiful. Hey, happy birthday. Thank because you. I will forget it. Yep. And don't worry. Um, it'll, it's on, it's on uh, you know, Championship Sunday. It's easy to remember. <laughs> easy to remember. Yep. Um, the golf game in Central Oregon is on HODL. <laughs> How about it? How For about sure. Those? How about those anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this tweet, uh, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on the election because I really uh, I'm over it. But for me, and I talked about this last week, Matt, uh, the statistics class and flipping a coin uh, and you turning in your homework and not showing any runs, a statistical impossibility. And I cannot verify the truth of the uh, Zero Hedge article. I haven't downloaded the data sets and um, done the analysis. Um, but this is, you know, I don't care about at the, at the booth fraud or pressuring people or not being able to see in-person ballots. This is something that I think could have legs. Uh, statistical yeah. analysis and anomalies and outliers. I mean, they take gold medals away from people uh, when, they, when they look at statistical analysis just on their progression of their times. I mean, this is something that cannot be, yeah. well, can't but, be a but conspiracy again, but theorist. But again, Bob, the Democrats aren't concerned about science. They're concerned about winning the election. Well, of and, course. And the media is clearly on board because the media, as we know, does not anoint, nor can it tell us that uh, we have a new president. So no states have yet to say we have a new president. And that's all I'm going by. So right. it's as simple as that. As a trader, you have to look at this stuff. It's, I mean... You can't make it up. You can't make up the fact that Biden and Harris come out Saturday morning and on every media channel and start acting like they're already the president, yet they haven't won. And this morning, 7 a.m. Eastern, Pfizer comes out with a miraculous, we've got a vaccine that's 90% effective. It clearly was working two weeks ago on the 94 patients. Why not release it then? I mean, I'm just saying, this stuff, you can't Well, and, and exactly, and, and I... I tied Mike Novogratz into this discussion because he's a huge never Trumper. Yep. And, uh, and I respect that fine. I, I don't care, but, but he's also a blockchain advocate. Right. And we've said all along here, please, if we can land a, 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 a rocket that just went into orbit on a ship in the middle of the Pacific, blockchain for, for sure has said that they can solve this problem. We don't need to be having this debate. It's ridiculous. Right. And uh, the, the fact that technology, i.e., uh, you know, statistical modeling, and if all these supposed mail-in ballots went through the post office, through the sorting process, like they did in, what, 44 states, how the analysis from a statistical frame of mind showed that uh, these other things look suspicious. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, well, like, fair enough. Who knows? I, I, I can see. Nobody, no, nobody has won the election. That's all we know. Um, we're, we're st as traders, all you can do is stick to the facts, stick to the prices. Nobody has won. Nobody has lost. And here we are almost a week after the election. Who knows how long it'll play out? You know, Supreme Court's already involved, but nobody's covering that, but they are involved. And yeah. the Supreme Court holds way more power to me. SCOTUS holds all the power over media. I don't care what MSNBC, CNN, Fox, I don't care what any of them say. We have no winner. And, you know, Biden can go about, you know, picking his cabinet, but he's not the winner yet. And Trump just fired his secretary of defense and put in a new one. He is the president. That's all we know. That's all we can focus, is on, focus on is where the price is today. We know nothing. Nothing has changed. <laughs> now, uh that being said, let's let's transition into a crazy overnight weekend market of markdowns, right? Yeah, for sure. And I, markdowns? And, uh, oh, did I say markdowns? Yes, I did. What do I want to talk about first, Bobby? Let's go, wanna, baby. Let's fire. I want to talk about Goldilocks. Goldilocks, again, has left the building. Uh, 
I'm trying to bring up the gold chart here, but gold made a new three month high today, okay? It's off the highs right now, but 1848, that is a new three month high, swiftly I must say. And we were talking about this last week. We said, sell this rally. It looks like a sucker's rally again for the Goldilocks. Folks, if you sold one lot, you made $10,000 over the weekend, it's that simple. And they do have I mean, micros in gold, do they not? I'm pretty sure they do. They do, but if you just sold one regular, you made 10 grand, it's insane. And it, and I, and, I, and the, the last time we, we covered this uh, on the weekly, it had went right not only to your uh, high of the value area, but also in the standard deviation uh, modeling right to that momentum level. Yep. And for me, man, mo you know, I, I hashtagged it, mind the mo. Momentum's everything for me on whatever time frame I'm looking at, and the slope of the standard deviation line is also important. But for sure, a rejection of a longer term momentum play to the upside here in gold, and yeah, also go ahead. in the profile. Pardon me. I said also in the profile, same yeah. rejection. Now, along with that, I want to I want to toss up a, a banking index chart because we've blown through the roof here, right? Banking went from almost it went up ten, but you know, twelve percent here. So. Again, from Friday today, everything in the world has changed. You need to be buying banks apparently now. Um, they were sitting here. They were, they were sitting here, kind of chopping broccoli, and they've given an exit. Here's the thing that I find interesting: with all this positivity, we still haven't taken out the post-COVID recovery level of 91.31. I'll leave it at that. That's the banks. That's just the indices here. I'm not picking on any one bank here. All of them are up today. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about we, that goes inside with this, this is what's interesting. We've been talking about how all assets were won. Bitcoin is red today, gold is red today, and the dollar has reversed. It's all following the dollar. I, I continue to say this is the most important item on the, on the screens that you need to be following for clues for the rest of the market. And the dollar, again, was trying to make a new, you know, a new low from earlier in the year, couldn't do it on that push down and has reversed. As a matter of fact, it's trading right around 92.80 or so. I've got a delayed quote on this system right now. It's not uh, live, but it is trading around 92.80 right now, Bobby. And then two more things I want to talk about real quick, just to show you kind of the euphoria and how this has blown off this morning. There's a number of, you know, we basically had a stationary bike crash, if you will, on Peloton. We'll talk about <laughs> I never understood the fundamental of this one, but. And we talked about this and bam, you know, again, it was bouncing last week. That was a great level to sell. We said, you know, 130, anywhere in that 130. Well, guess what, folks? If you hit that, that thing's down to 94. It was a low today, hanging around 107. Anywhere from 131 down here to 94, there's your trade. Holes are being filled in here. Profile is still looking lower to us. Uh, the other one that I thought was interesting, I'll bring up two more actually real quick. Uh, Penn Gaming had a huge spike this morning and I wanna show this. Again, couldn't make a new high, right? We've talked about this. If you've been following this story, there's no more gambling on the table except for football and we're already halfway through the season. So if you got a gift like you did today in Penn, knowing what you know about the fundamentals and where we are, couldn't make a new high. That was an easy sell this morning, and it went from 75 all the way down here to 65 already, Bob. It's already filled the gap. That's from the open market, by the way, okay? So that's real. And then you're seeing um, a couple, I'll, I'll just throw up a couple um, airline names because it's interesting again. So risk off, you know, the, the stationary bike crash, Netflix, Shopify. The shutdown world is off. Now risk is on for travel and hotels, right? All they all spiked off the open. But if you weren't long, you missed it. And matter of fact, if you didn't get long, you know, Thursday, Friday, the trade, there's nothing here. It's been down all day. So you have to look at this for where it is. You missed, if you weren't long prior to this news, you got nothing and there's no long upside. There's no continuation on this. This is, to me, this is like, sometimes they ring the bell, Bob. You know what I mean? Sometimes they ring the bell. This is to me a bell ringing moment. We have seen the top. If Biden wins, if he is anointed president, I assure you we have seen the highs for the entire 2020 and 2021. There's my call. If he wins. I love the call, man. Listen, open the windows. It's, it's uh, <laughs> open the windows and let's get the side bets going. Right. This is, this I is, bet that. Yep. Side bet. Side so bet, side bet. That's kind of what I see here this morning. I want to keep it brief. Um, 
I wanted to bring up one, one thing in the crypto space, man. And, and I believe me, I've covered this for a long time. Um, and this goes back to, um, you know, the news can be great. The fundamentals can be great. Uh, but what is the chart telling you? All right. And so this is news about Zcash. And I followed Zcash uh, for a long time here. And the, everything in this tweet looks like it's very positive, very positive, uh, you know, fundamental story. Um, and again, I, I take it from the, the, the viewpoint of should I be in Zcash, first of all, against the dollar? But more importantly, if I'm holding Bitcoin, should I be shoving some of my Bitcoin holdings towards Zcash? on that uh, quadrant type of diversification play. And uh, hold on, going to the chart. One second here, Matt, yep. you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having slow activity. I'm happy to bring I'm, up mine. Here, why don't I bring up mine while you're bringing up yours just so we can I'll cover. Oh, by the way, yep. just before I talk about that, the, the pork hog cutout contract uh, opened today, only at 20. 25 cent range straight down from the open. I don't think they had very good participation. Uh, not what they wanted for sure. Uh, but anyway, for me, that's going to take uh, uh, maybe three weeks before I have enough price discovery that I want to talk about it. Um, here's Zcash against the dollar daily. And again, uh, just toying with that up momentum level on the daily and not able to really close or sustain, make higher highs over any time frame. Uh, but more importantly, on the weekly, still dallying in low momentum. Uh, and so it's, it's not a story for me that I want, you know, great, the fundamental news is fine, but I'm not getting involved because it's still toying around that low momentum on the weekly. And then also against Bitcoin, same thing, same as it ever was, four weeks now in a row in lower momentum on the weekly uh, against Bitcoin. So I, I can't, I can't stress enough how you, that's, I have no problem building a fundamental story around anything. And the thing about the fundamental story is you can find both sides of that also, just like you can in technicals, depending on time frame. Yep. Uh, but for me, that's what I'm keying in on here. Uh, it needs to show me something as a, on the daily against the dollar, and it has to take out this lower momentum level on the weekly uh, for, for me to have any inkling to, to jump in on the fundamental story. Take you know, it away, I'm, man. You know, I'm looking at a longer term chart also here, not quite daily, but a 610 minute chart. And I, I actually like it. I actually like it from the bullish standpoint that we held the lower uh, test of the value area down here at 52. We're trading 58. We've actually pulled back to what is currently on that 610 minute chart, kind of the point of control. So again, very tight risk in here. If it goes below 52 on a close, I'm out. But uh, I don't mind this in here, Bob. It's actually pulled back, uh, building a base. It's been building a base really since August after the pullback hasn't made the new low. So respect the new low and, and, and maybe buy it with, you know, as Bitcoin, again, has gone shot to the moon. This hasn't had the run that Bitcoin has. So I would say maybe this is where you want to put your money. Right on. I'd actually, you know, I, I love the, the, the multiple time frames, multiple methodologies, especially when something clear like that profile shows you on the risk side. And the reward, I have often think this time too, that people make the mistake of quantifying the reward in the exact same manner that you quantify the risk. Right. For sure, you don't want to marry a loser. So the risk has to be solid, man. You cannot start wavering on your risk and jumping between time frames. The reward side is that story evolves and you're playing with the house's money. Uh, I, I, you know... I can evolve my reward side of things uh, more flexibly because I have no flexibility in the, in the loss side when I'm trading good. <laughs> hey, Bob, one more thing, because we've been talking about this for a while also, and I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, we have been talking about Zoom and how, yes. bad, how bad it was. And look at this. Uh, I've pulled up the Zoom um, Exxon cross that we talked about and what a great short it was setting up to be. And in fact, again, that little rally uh, Friday up to that 15 level, bam. I mean, low risk with, you know, not having to use a lot of capital on this type of spread. If you weren't just short, you know, flat out zoom, which is already down hundred as we've talked about, but it takes a lot of capital to do that. Here's a way where you could say, Hey, I like the, you know, I like the idea of Exxon being long and I like the idea of, of zoom being short. They were comparable, 
uh, market caps as we discussed last week and this thing has fallen out of bed it will travel back here to the six four dollar two dollar range Bob it's just a matter of time so again 15 back to 11 and a half already here zooms down big uh, DocuSign is down big we're continuing to see kind of a reversal of all these uh, pandemic stocks if you will overstock down 17 percent so again all boats aren't floating here this is exciting time for traders because volatility is around we welcome you to join us, marketvitals.io, and uh, that's really all I have for, t for you. Right today. on, Matt, right on. And, you know, let's just, just on a parting thought, the fundamentals of that, those two trades, like whoever thought that people would rather just stay home forever and that these stocks would just rather work from home, I mean, people want to get out. in my opinion, I'm yep. going absolutely bananas. I want to go to concerts. I want to see live music. I want to see live sports. Exactly. Yep. Well, what are... Anyway. Oh, yes. All right, Matt, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow.